Good morning, everybody. It is Thursday. This is Beginning Art. Welcome. I'm glad you guys are all here. Uh, good morning to Karina. Good morning to Tarini, Evan, uh, April, Gerard. Everybody saying hello in the Q&A box. Welcome. Good morning. Uh, as always, if you guys need uh, any help with anything, if you have any questions or you want to share something, you can type it in the Q&A box. Uh, the raise hand feature doesn't do anything, so you don't have to press <laughs> that button. Uh, but if you want to ask anything or say anything, let me know in the Q&A box and I'll try to get to everything you guys say. Can't always get to everything, but uh, any you know questions you have, just ask them in there. Good morning to Jacobo, Vivian, Mateo, Leia. Uh, good morning, everybody. Um, April, it's just me this morning. Rusty's not here. <laughs> He'll be back next week for the uh, drawing for beginners class. Hi, Ian. Hi, Ritvik. Hi, Aubrey. All right, you guys ready to get started? Today, we're going to talk about the artist Pablo Picasso. Uh, Pablo Picasso is a very famous artist, and you may have seen some of his work before. It well, I'll show you in a second. Uh, before we get started, though, we're going to have an art activity at the end of our lesson. So if you don't have it already, this is all you need today, uh, like a piece of paper, um, a pencil, crayons or markers. Um, basically, we just need today really basic stuff, something to draw on, something to draw with, and like crayons or markers would be good, too. So if you can uh, run and get those really quick. Uh, that'd be good. And I'll just, I'll wait for a little bit. We won't start our lesson uh, for a minute or two uh, while you guys grab that. So uh, I'm just going to wait a minute and I'll see you guys back here in a second. So while people are finishing grabbing that stuff, uh, Leia and Cian say hi. Isis says, I love Picasso. Awesome. Uh, then I hope you enjoy this. Um, April says, I had my stuff before the class even started. That's great. <laughs> I'm really glad to hear it. Um, yeah. OK, so real briefly, before we talk about Picasso, uh, because I don't want anybody to miss us talking about him, I want to talk a little bit about art in general throughout human history, uh, because there's one part of it that's going to be really important today. And that is how realistic things look. Uh, when people first started painting, if you've ever seen like cave paintings, uh, very early paintings, they don't look very realistic. They don't look like a photograph. Um, but, you know, humans have been around for a long, long, long time before photography was invented. And for a long time, paintings, the people that made them, tried to make them look more and more and more like real life. Uh, in the Middle Ages, painters were really attempting to get, uh, you know, make their, their, their portraits of like kings and, you know, important people look more and more like real life, like the real thing. And then in the time period called the Renaissance, they started getting really good at it. Like they were able to make paintings that looked more and more like real people. But when photography was invented, uh, one of the effects that it had was that painters and people that were painting, like people and natural things, they would sometimes feel like, oh, I can just take a picture of that and it'll look perfect. Like my paintings don't have to just try to attempt to look like real life. I can do you know, other things with my paintings. Um, Karina says, I like drawing and art. That's really awesome, good. Uh, Jacobo loves Picasso's art. That's awesome. <laughs> Ian says his art is good, but not good. <laughs> you know, Ian, that's, that's a valid viewpoint. Uh, and a lot of people I think have that viewpoint. And we're going to talk about that a little bit today. Mateo, yes, you can use color pencils. Uh, basically, I want something for you to be able to draw with and then like something to color with too. So 
uh, whatever you want to draw with is fine. And then whatever you want to kind of color in your picture with is going to be fine too. Leia learned to paint with watercolor this summer. That's awesome. And Gerard says, I want to be an artist. That's awesome, Gerard. All right. So let's, uh, let's start talking about Picasso. Ian, thank you for bringing up that viewpoint because I think that's actually going to be really helpful for what we talk about. So here's our supplies. Here is a Pablo Picasso painting. This is a pretty famous one. Uh, a lot of people, when you first see this, you might go, whoa, that's, whoa, that's a lot going on in this picture. <laughs> There's a lot of color. There's a lot of very bold uh, lines. Um, when you look at it, this is not a quote unquote realistic painting. Um, uh, this is a painting of a woman, but her lips are blue. She's got green. Uh, there's a lot of like orange lines in the middle. One eye is way bigger than the other. Uh, the hair is green. Um, there's like a, maybe like a shadow on one side of the face. That's very dark. Um, you know, the clothing seems very interesting. The, the, the woman's neck is white and yellow and green. Uh, there's a lot going on. <laughs> Katrina says his paintings look like they could be in any direction. That's a very good point. That's a good observation. Uh, and Katrina also says it looks kind of 3D. Yeah. Uh, Gerard says I could draw on a canvas with poster colors. Yeah, whatever you want to draw with should be totally fine. Um, Vivian asks, does Picasso use pastels? Uh, he used, I think, a lot of different things. He used a number of different um, types of paint. He would use oil paints. He would use, um, like in this painting on the cheek here, you can actually see some very chunky looking paint has been added there. Um, but yeah, uh, Picasso would do a lot of sketches. He would do, um, this is gonna, this amazed me. I think this might amaze you guys too. When I looked up how many paintings Picasso or how many works of art Picasso had made in his lifetime, he was very busy. He made like tens of thousands of pieces of art in his lifetime. There were just so many. Gerard asks, why does the painting have two noses? Well, that's a very good question, Gerard. Uh, I think, um, you know, it kind of looks like we can see two nostrils here. This uh, other nose behind it might be a shadow, but it might be another nose. Um, <laughs> April says it looks like she likes tattoos. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> uh, Gerard says he finds the painting gross and disgusting. That is a totally okay viewpoint to have. Um, Aubrey, good question. Who is Pablo Picasso? Well, this is the kind of painting that Pablo Picasso is most known for. Here's a few more. This is a very famous one. This painting sold for a lot of money a few years back, like literally millions and millions of dollars. Um, this one is a portrait of a crying woman. Uh, if you look closely, you can see some of this white uh, area here on the face. These are like fingers with fingernails. Over here is another hand that's like green. This hand is kind of blue. Um, there might be like a, like a, you know, she might be sort of dabbing at her face with like a handkerchief or something. Um, but it's really interesting. It's very striking. Even if it's not your favorite style of art right of way, I feel like you, you definitely, this, looking at this definitely creates a bit of an emotion in me. It definitely creates a, a, a bit of a response. You go, whoa, if nothing else. <laughs> uh, Isis says, I think it was creative. Jacob says, creepy. <laughs> Uh, Gerard says, on a scale of 1 to 10, I'd give it an 8.5 because of the texture and the way it makes me see it. All right. Good review for Picasso. This is another one. This is another weird one. So this is another painting of a woman, uh, but her eyes are like really in different places. Part of her face kind of goes off to one side. Uh, you know, it's weird. It's definitely weird. Um, Vivian says, it's confusing. I don't know what is what. Aubrey says, weird. Evan says B plus. <laughs> okay. Uh, Evan, you don't need to hit the raise hand feature. It doesn't do anything. If you want to share any, any uh, you know, share anything with the class, just type it in the Q&A box. Uh, Jacobo says, that is really creepy. Um, April says, it looks like she's begging. Um, Leia says, Picasso definitely showed creativity by expressing feeling in his art. I agree. Jacob says, more creepy. Matthias says, to be honest, I don't like it. 
Uh, Gerard says it looks like she has two faces. And Isis says that uh, her brother says it looks like a cyclops. Chris says very creepy. Sophia says strange. All right. Well, we've got a lot of feelings about these paintings. <laughs> so this, uh, yes, we're, we're talking about Picasso today. And this is a, sorry about that. Going a little bit ahead a little bit. This is a picture of Picasso when he was really young. This is Picasso as a boy. Um, Picasso's father was a painter too. And he, Picasso, uh, like would watch his father paint and wanted to learn painting uh, from a very early age. Um, it said that Picasso supposedly started drawing before he learned how to talk which is really wild to me because I have two young children and uh, you know, they learn, they start learning words. They start learning to talk at a very early age. So if Picasso was learning to draw before he could even talk, that means he started drawing, you know, really, really young. Um, and yes, Mateo, this is a real picture of him. I think it's a little bit creased right here. Like I got bent, but this is supposedly a real photo of Picasso. Um, this is a picture that Picasso painted when he was eight years old. You know, it's pretty basic, but uh, you know, it's pretty good for an eight year old if you ask me. Um, the horse here, if you look at the horse's legs, the back ones are like bent the, the right direction. Um, the way this like counter or this, uh, this wall here, how it kind of extends into the distance, there's some shadow. Uh, this woman here, I think they're watching, this is a, like a matador. This is somebody who's gonna like fight a bull in a bullfight. Um, this woman here kind of has like this cloth draped over the wall. Um, you know, the people, there's more people in the background, but they're kind of faded out. Uh, there's a lot of like good technical skill in this for an eight-year-old. Um, people of that age, uh, you know, often maybe wouldn't uh, paint this well with oil paints. Um, Gerard asks, did Picasso paint like that because of his background or the way he saw things? Well, uh, you, you'll, you'll have to tell me what you think at the end of the lesson, Gerard. April says, I love it. <laughs> Isis says, when I was eight, I was still drawing stick men. <laughs> Leia says, that's amazing. For that age, he was so talented. Uh, Vivian says, I don't think I could paint something that good at eight years old because it looks like he has years of experience. Well, if the stories are to be believed, then yes, he, he was drawing for and painting for a long time by the time he was eight years old. But this next one, I think is really gonna ama amaze all of you because it amazed me. Are you ready for this? Picasso painted this painting when he was 16 years old. Uh, I was blown away when, when I saw that. Uh, this, the man sitting here at the bedside, uh, apparently this, his, uh, Picasso's father sat for this painting. Like his father is the model for the man sitting here. But this is like a doctor attending to a sick, person and uh, this woman here is holding a small child and offering some water. But uh, this painting is amazing for 16 years old, if you ask me. Uh, you know, there's, there's shadow, there's light, um, you know, the, over here behind the doctor, you know, where there's like a lot of shadow, it kind of fades out. Um, but things are lit up really well. The folds in the cloth are, are pretty great. Um, I read one thing about this painting that there were some art critics who were like, well, I don't think it's that good. And they, <laughs> they, they criticized the hand here of the, the sick person. They said the hand wasn't drawn well enough. Uh, and it looked more like a glove hanging down than and I guess the other hand too. They said the hands were not drawn well enough. Uh, but anybody that's ever tried to draw a person, uh, you know, knows that uh, people are hard to draw. There's a lot of different surfaces on the human body. Uh, the human face has a lot of different pieces pointing out in different directions and hands are, are really hard to draw. Uh, so, I mean, give the guy a break. I think this painting is amazing for 16 years old. Um, <laughs> yeah, Chris is saying, I drew Stickman, I guess at eight years old, yeah. Um, Amanda says, I have a hard time painting horses. Milo says, I still draw stick figures. Hey, I'm right there with you, Milo. <laughs> I'm a beginner too. Looking at this painting, I says, ooh, Juan says, oh my. Uh, Gerard says, I didn't even know how to draw scribbles at eight years old. Grace says, wow. 
Vivian says, what? That looks like a photograph. Oh my goodness. Yeah, I, I agree. April says, that's a painting? I thought it was a photo. I mean, it's really good. This mirror above the, the person's head has a lot of, you know, detail to it. Uh, even like the walls, like one's a little bit shadowier than the other. Over here by this window, there's like stains. There's like things dripping down the wall kind of. It's, it doesn't look very clean over here. I, I think it's amazing. Um, Isis says he was very good at realism. Yeah. So early on when uh, Picasso was learning to paint, he painted stuff like this. And I think a lot of people, when they see his later work, they think that he must not have been very good at painting. But if you look at his early stuff, uh, that's not true. Like Picasso was actually really good. There's one, there's another story. We don't know if it's true or not, but supposedly Picasso's father, who was also a painter, when he saw what Picasso could do as a child, he supposedly put down his stuff and said he was never going to paint again. <laughs> I don't know if that's true. That sounds like a bit of an exaggeration to me, but um, no, that's the story. Gerard says, those criticizers don't know what they're talking about. <laughs> uh, just wait, though. Look at these next ones. This is a portrait of uh, Picasso's father. This is a self-portrait, and this is a portrait of Picasso's mother. So this is uh, you know, Picasso with his parents. And he drew, he painted these as a teenager too. I think this one on the right of his mother, I think he painted this when he was 14 years old. Um, again, these blew me away because what I know of Picasso, uh, when I started researching him more, it was, I knew about Picasso's stranger paintings, the stuff that looks a little bit more strange. And I think even I thought to myself that you know, I don't know, maybe he doesn't know how to, how to, you know, do a realistic painting. But these were the paintings Picasso was making as a teenager. He learned all of the classic ways to paint and to draw. He actually knew how to do amazing stuff. Uh, there's another story about Picasso's father was going to enter him like in an art school. And you were allowed to take a month to, uh, paint like a, a, a painting that you would submit to the school. And that would be sort of like your entrance exam. They would look at what you painted and they would say, okay, you're, you're either good enough to study here and get better or you're not. Uh, I found, well, there's two different stories. One of them said that Picasso took only a week to make his painting. Another one said that he did it in a day. So what this art school expected was that people would take a month to make a painting and Picasso either did it in a day or like a week and they were blown away and they let him study there. Um, so yeah, Gerard says that the mom looks more realistic than the other pictures. <laughs> Vivian says, I think he can time travel because that looks like a photograph. <laughs> um, yes, April, we will be doing a uh, art activity a little bit later, but we're just doing, this is like the history portion and then we'll be doing a little bit of uh, actual work ourselves in a bit. Um, yeah, Leia and Sian say, we're so surprised. Neither of us can draw a normal looking face. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think we can all agree uh, that he was really good at drawing what we would consider realistic or quote unquote normal paintings. So Isaiah says, my question is, where would he get the idea for his painting? Well, when he was getting trained as a painter by his father and then at art schools, they trained him in sort of the classic way. There's like a normal way that a lot of painters learned how to paint. And you know, you use shadow, you use lines and color, and um, you can see all of that in these paintings. Um, and each one, like his father's face on this side has like shadow, the, the light source is off to the other side. Uh, in this painting, the background's darker, one side of his face is in shadow, et cetera. You know, these, this is just classic painting skills and he was really good at it. Um, as Picasso got older, he started to travel. He started to meet other, you know, painters. And Pablo Picasso started to have more life experiences. Um, like a friend of his uh, died and he was really sad about that, uh, the story goes. And uh, apparently in this period of his life, he started to paint lots of pictures that had a lot of blue in them. So art historians call that the blue period of his life. Um, or of his work. Uh, Picasso, it was almost like he was already so good at painting 
natural, normal looking, realistic paintings that uh, some people feel that he kind of got bored with it. Um, you know, he could paint a realistic hand or face or whatever all day, but that wasn't really what he wanted to communicate with his art. Um, art at its core is communication. You're trying to uh, say something or express something that you might not be able to say with words. Um, in this picture here of this woman leaning on the table, uh, you know, you get a feeling from her. Um, I don't know if she's sad or if she's kind of lost or, uh, you know, she seems to really have, you know, her attention on something. She's, she's caught up thinking about something. And, you know, it might take a lot of words to try to communicate that, but you can kind of get that feeling pretty quickly just by looking at her face. Uh, and here, I mean, look at those hands. That hand is like longer than her entire head. It's a little bit weird. It, weird, it weirds me out a little bit seeing her hand here. It almost looks a little bit alien. But we know having seen Picasso's earlier paintings that he could have made this look more realistic if he wanted to. As an artist, he's making a conscious choice to paint this way. This is how Picasso wants you to see his work. Uh, this middle one, yeah, Vivian says, these look a little bit like cartoons. Um, Grace points out that the child, she feels, looks more realistic than the other ones. Um, Isis says she looks very serious. <laughs> um, and Gerard says he could draw that good because of his background. Yeah, I agree. Um, so this was a period of his life where he was drawing a lot of uh, pictures with a lot of blue. Uh, they seemed a little bit more sad. He moved on to the next kind of big chunk of his work. Uh, historians call um, like the rose period. Uh, he used a lot more like red and pink. Um, this is like a portrait where, you know, this one on the left, it looks like this person's staring straight at you. It's a little bit uncomfortable to look at it. Um, and again, these using a lot of this red, red is kind of a can, it's, a, it's like a color and artwork that can create a little bit of discomfort. It's not like a smooth, relaxing color. It's much more of like a, it can feel aggressive. It can feel a little bit angry. It can feel, you know, there's like a whole theory of like why artists use the colors they use in their paintings. Um, and it's different for everybody. An artist can, you know, can do whatever they want with their work, but, you know, a lot of people will agree that different colors used in paintings can make you feel different ways. And I'm just giving my personal opinion. I mean, this, all this red here definitely creates an emotional impact on me. This painting over here on the right, uh, you can see that Picasso, he, he, you know, it's, it's like a lot of his art wasn't just all one way. You would see, you know, back here in the blue period, he might paint something that didn't look as realistic and looked a little bit more bizarre. And then he might go and paint something like this picture over here on the right looks a little bit more realistic again. Uh, this person sitting here, I think these are like circus performers. Uh, you can see sort of the muscles in this man's back. You can kind of see the muscles of his leg with the shadows here. Um, there's a girl here balancing on a ball. She, you know, the way her, her, like her outfit is drawn looks pretty realistic. So uh, Picasso is definitely, you know, he really painted whatever he wanted. Um, and, you know, after the fact, historians try to look at it and sort of, uh, you know, describe what was going on in his life in general. But, you know, <laughs> Grace says, it's really creepy. <laughs> Vivian says, I like the first one, but I wouldn't buy it because its eyes are following me. I know that's, I, I get the same feeling. Yeah, Gerard says, I've heard theories that red is an uh, angry and aggressive color. So yeah, a lot of people talk about that. Oh, but red is my favorite color, he says. That's awesome. Um, so then uh, the, the stories go that Picasso was observing some uh, artwork in a museum or uh, somewhere that they were showing artwork. And he saw some, some work from uh, Africa that like some sculptures, like some, maybe some masks and stuff that, you know, the, the way the faces and the way the, they were, they had like a lot of angles and they, you know, 
seeing this work had an impact on him. So historians call this like the African period of his artwork. Um, and you can kind of see that in this, when, you know, he started uh, moving even further away, you know, he, this is a pretty famous painting over here on the left of a friend of his. Um, but it's already, you can start to see some, even while it's still a little bit realistic, it's like there's angles to her face. Um, you can, it, it feels like the nose is sort of really poking out. Um, it's like the face really sticks out further than the, the rest of the painting. Uh, and then he really went hard in that direction of putting a lot of angles and surfaces. Uh, in this painting of three people here, you know, it's almost like instead of being uh, natural figures, like the rounded shapes of people, it's like these bodies are made out of blocks. It's almost like they're carved out of uh, instead of being rounded shapes, it's almost like the bodies have to be uh, made out of flat uh, triangles uh, and, you know, some squares. But you can definitely see the shape of like the three people still, but we're moving further away from quote unquote, like realistic, uh, you know, paintings and drawings. And this over here on the right, this was a self portrait that he did. If you think back to just when he was a teenager and what a self portrait looked like, and then this self-portrait as an adult, I mean, you could look at this and go like, wait, does this guy know how to paint? But this was, again, a conscious decision he was making. Picasso, when he did the self-portrait, this is how he wanted it to look. And I'll tell you, making a picture like this is actually harder than it looks. Uh, there's still, I mean, he's still, there's a lot of skill that goes into uh, a painting like this. Um, I mean, if you just look at like the, his shirt collar and then his coat, uh, there's like space between them. Even some of the line work here, you know, he, he, Picasso still definitely knew what he was doing. This is not a stick figure here. Uh, the colors that he chooses, the person definitely stands out from the background. They don't just blend into their background. Um, he started with a friend of his and, you know, other painters. Uh, he started moving into this period is called cubism because a cube is like a 3D uh, shape. And he started really moving into uh, his paintings and his pictures, having a lot of this uh, where things look like they are made out of blocks and shapes and triangles and things. So over here, there's like a vase of flowers and a, and a cup. Uh, this middle one is a portrait of a person, but it's almost like they're made out of little cubes and triangles and things. Um, some people describe Picasso's work in this period as it's almost like you're, you're starting to see something from multiple sides at the same time. If you look at this guitar that the person's playing, you look at the top part, you can, it's like you're seeing it from one side, but then you look down here, it's like you're seeing the guitar a little bit from a different angle. Uh, sometimes with his, his faces, this person's face here, it's like, depending on what part of the face you're looking at, you're seeing it from a little bit of a different angle than every other part of the face. Um, <laughs> Vivian says, I really like the first two pictures, but the last one has so many white spots and it bothers me. <laughs> That's okay. Um, yeah, Vivian says the middle one looks so hard to make. Yeah. So yeah, they're, they're even while they don't really look quote unquote realistic, this still takes a lot of skill to make something like this. Amanda says, I learned about cubism. That's awesome, Amanda. Um, so again, these are now, it's like we're moving even further into the future here and we're moving further away from his most natural paintings. Uh, again, these are the sort of paintings that Picasso is most well known for. Here on the left, this one is like a picture of three musicians. It can almost be like looking at some of these paintings can turn into a bit of like a scavenger hunt. Uh, you know, when you look around at first, there's a lot of color, there's a lot of shapes. It can take a second sometimes to figure out what exactly is going on. Uh, and you can start picking out things like over here. So this art, this musician on the left, you can kind of see his beard. You can see his violin, 
Uh, you follow this color down. Look at his hand, it's so little, but it's holding the violin bow here. Um, this artist in the middle, you can see his hands around like a flute. You can see his music that he has there. You can see his legs under the table. Um, and it's, it's like they're all smushed together. It's almost like they're three people smushed into one. And this, you know, this is a communication. This is something that Picasso, uh, he wants to do it this way. Uh, this one on the right is we're getting more what's called abstract. It's getting harder to and harder to tell even what we're looking at. Is this one, uh, you know, is, is this a musical instrument too? Is this some thing sitting on a table? Um, you know, it's a little bit hard to say just looking at it. You might spend some time studying this. You might uh, decide for yourself how it makes you feel. Um, what do we think? Why did Picasso choose these colors? What do we think he was maybe trying to tell us? Um, <laughs> Isis says about the musicians, they look like robots. Um, Vivian feels a little bit of confusion looking at these pictures. And I would say, Vivian, maybe that's part of the point. Maybe uh, Picasso wanted you to feel a little bit confused looking at these. Maybe he felt a little bit confused sometimes while painting and he's making a picture that, you know, gives you that feeling too. Okay, so back to uh, this, this portrait of a woman crying. So we, you know, we started out looking at this and now, you know, towards the end of our lesson here, uh, I just thought we could look at it again now that we've talked about Picasso and we know what Picasso was capable of. When we look at this, we really know that everything Picasso is doing here is a choice. This, when he's painting this woman, this is how he wants you to see her. And this is how he wants you to feel when you look at this. Uh, since it is a woman crying, I mean, um, I know when you see like a person crying, uh, maybe in public or a friend or family member crying, I know how it makes me feel. Um, I don't like, uh, I feel uncomfortable or I feel sad uh, seeing somebody else cry. Maybe that's part of Picasso's communication. Maybe that's what he's trying to make you feel is when you see a grown up crying and it makes you feel uncomfortable and a little bit weird, uh, maybe that's how you're supposed to feel looking at this painting. It's a little bit weird, it's a little bit off. Uh, and again, uh, as this is, this painting is an example of cubism, you can also see here the multiple angles. That's something I wanted to point out one more time. When you look at the top, if you just look at her eyes, it seems like she's facing forward. But if you look down here at her mouth and her chin, it's like we're looking from the side. So really interesting. Sophia says, I'm very confused. <laughs> Myla says, what is Picasso's most famous painting? Well, he had a lot. Again, he had tens of thousands of paintings and a lot of them are really famous. Uh, if you go do like a Google search for Picasso painting when we're done here, you'll see a lot of really, uh, really amazing paintings. Amanda says, I like the hair. Aubrey says, uh, I'm confused. <laughs> All right, so now let's get inspired by Picasso and try making our own cubist art. Um, I want us to take just kind of like a simple picture. Like I just found a picture on the internet of, this is a man sitting in a chair. And if you ask me, he looks a little bit, um, I don't know, a little bit awkward, maybe a little bit uh, confused. I know when I sit in a chair and, or if people are gonna take photos of me, sometimes uh, I feel a little bit awkward or confused <laughs> or, uh, you know, you don't always love that people are taking pictures of you. Um, but yeah, looking at this, that is the feeling that I get from this guy a little bit. Like he's trying to sit there and be, you know, uh, sit there and let this person take a picture, but it looks a little bit awkward to me. So that is sort of the feeling that I'm going to run with as I draw this. Um, I want all of you to, you know, you can uh, draw something like this, or you can pick your own picture. You can pick something in the room around you. But what we're gonna do is, I'm just, I'm gonna take this off the screen so you guys can see my, my page as I draw. Um, but I want you all to pick something around you, maybe something in the room, 
maybe a picture. Uh, you can open up in another tab on your computer a picture, but just pick whatever you want for your own drawing. All right, so I'm switching to the overhead camera here. Hi, everybody. Here's my hands. I'm going to be using, like we use in our basic drawing class, I'm going to use a piece of charcoal because you guys can see it. And then when I'm done sketching this out, I'm going to just use some crayons to kind of color it in. So I have my picture up on you know another screen so I can see it. But uh, yeah, so as I look over this person, um, I'm going to let sort of my feelings about him guide how I draw him. I'm not going to try to make it super realistic. Um, I'm going to start with kind of the basic outline of his face. But like Rusty says in our drawing classes, I'm not going to try to be too careful. Uh, being careful is not the uh, goal here. Um, I'm not going to try, I'm not going to go over and try to be, uh, you know, make it perfect or exactly like, you know, real life. Because as you can see in a lot of cubism in Picasso's work, he was not trying to be exactly like real life either. Um, so this guy, he, I think he's trying to be calm and let this picture be taken of him. But I think he's also feeling really awkward at the same time. So I'm going to try to draw both of those in his face. I'm going to have this eye over here on the right. He's going to be looking off to the left like he was in the original picture. Um, but because I think he feels awkward about getting his picture taken, I'm going to have his other eye uh, face directly forward at us. So one eye, this side of his face, I'm even going to do a little, you know, a little line there to show you that this side of his face, I'm going to have looking where he's supposed to be looking. And he's going to, here's his mouth, he's going to try to, uh, you know, feel calm and like, you know, he's, he's doing good, you know, here's his lips. Um, but the other side, he's going to be looking straight at us and feeling, so it's almost like the left side, I'm going to try to have be uh, how he's actually feeling on the inside. And I'm going to have him feel, uh, here's his lips. He's not, you know, he's more like he's frowning. He's not so sure about getting his picture taken. Um, yeah, let's give him, he's got really you know, bushy, dark hair. Um, I'm going to give him, because he feels awkward, I'm going to give him big, awkward ears. Um, so he, on, <laughs> uh, Grace says, I'm going to draw a dog. Um, <laughs> Grace says, yay, that we're drawing now. Uh, April has to go. Bye, April. <laughs> okay, I'm going to have uh, the right side. His hand is going to be just in his lap. I don't know if you can see the bottom there. So yeah, his hand is going to be in his lap, just being all uh, calm. Um, but I'm going to have his other arm because he feels really awkward on this side. He's going to have his arm up in a very awkward high, like he forgot he's sitting for a uh, painting or a photograph, and he decided to wave at the person taking his picture. And then he's feeling, why am I waving to the person taking my picture? This is the thought going through his head. He's suddenly like, oh. So you look at this side, he's like, what am I doing? And this side, He's like, yeah, I know what I'm doing. I'm getting my picture taken. <laughs> okay. Um, all right. So that's my, my roughed in uh, dark line drawing here. And then while I can use uh, my colors and crayons, I can choose the, uh, my, my coloring in, my background, my everything else. I can choose colors that I feel express some emotions instead of trying to make it realistic. Um, I'm going to have 
the side of him that feels calm and collected. I'm going to use some cool colors. I think I want to make his eyes green. Um, I'm going to give him a, no, just for fun, I'm going to give him a blue face. Why not? <laughs> He's trying to feel blue. Hopefully I make it. I think, you know, blue is a awkward color for a face, but I think he's trying to uh, stay calm and collected when he's not really. So it's sort of like, this is the fake, uh, fake color of his face. And on this side, I'm going to use red because he is embarrassed and that's how he's really feeling. He's feeling uncomfortable. You guys can tell me in the Q&A box what you're drawing if you want to. <laughs> Grace says funny. <laughs> Mateo says, are we allowed to use a ruler? Uh, if you want to, I wouldn't. I think you, you gotta give yourself space to make mistakes here and keep it uh, you know, keep it rough. <laughs> um, let's see. Evan's drawing a man. Aubrey's drawing a puppy and a kitty. Mateo's drawing a book. Awesome, guys. I'm going to make his lips on this side purple. This kind of his frown here is going to be a purple frown. I'm going to make his, his ears a different red. So I think, you know, your ears sometimes get really red when you're embarrassed. I'm going to make them both red so that we see how he's really feeling on the inside. Make his eye yellow. I think it'll look cool. It'll look weird. <laughs> it's okay for your picture to look weird. Um, I'm going to make his hand on this side, his awkward hand is going to be red. I'm going to make his other one kind of a cool blue. And what do I want to do for his shirt? Mm -hmm. I'm just going to fill in his shirt with gray. Mm -hmm. Now the background, I'm going to find I'm gonna take a really dark color of blue to really, I'm gonna put it around his head to really hopefully make it kind of pop out. <gasps> Just broke my crayon. Ah, now I have two crayons. <laughs> I'm putting this, this color in here really heavy but you know uh something to know about picasso too i think he was really good at what he did but he was really fast too you know he, he made a lot of paintings through his life because uh i don't think he spent a lot of time worrying about you know what his pictures looked like sometimes if he wasn't happy with one of his paintings he would do it over and over again um, some of his paintings, if they weren't quite right, he would make like do dozens of versions of something until it was kind of how he liked it. Um, but he wasn't an artist that sat around kind of criticizing himself and feeling, uh, you know, like he needed to make something really perfect. And I think that's a good lesson that we can all follow is to have fun with it. Try to communicate something with your art, but don't sit there criticizing yourself and trying to make it perfect instead of trying to say something. Oh, 
All right, so there we go. That is my portrait of an awkward man. Um, if I want to, I could spend time putting, you know, more color in here, maybe outlining things. If I felt more, you know, if I came up with more feelings about what I think different things felt like as I made this, I could go back and add more. But uh, I had fun with it, you know? So I think, I think that's where I'm gonna end off for the day. Uh, all of you at home, I would love to see what you guys came up with while we were doing Cubist paintings today. So there we go. There's my portrait of an awkward man. <laughs> all right, so let me show you the address that you can send your stuff to. Send a photo of your, oh, sorry, this is mosaic from last week, but send a picture of your, whatever you drew, your cubist painting, your drawing to online.learningadelphian.org because we would love to see what you made. Thank you guys for watching today. Thank you for making art with us and we will see you next week.